Everyone, how are you doing? It's Steve with Ontario Telescope. Welcome to another edition of Ontario Telescope TV. It is a Saturday morning. It is gloomy here. It is cold. It seems like we're going backwards in our temperature from what we had this week, which was fabulous. Um, but we're it's not snowing, so hey, bonus. Okay, so um, there's a project that I've been working on for, embarrassingly, several years. Um, and I'm finally starting to sit down and look at it. Uh, I'm building an all sky camera just for myself out of, out of curiosity. I, ha I had a, a larger project in mind and I'll probably get there um, eventually. Uh, one day I just need to put a little more time into it. But I, I need more people for this, for what I want to do. But I'm building an all sky camera based off a of Raspberry Pi and I'm experimenting with a few different things uh, at the moment. Um, right now I'm having some trouble with the software and the actual Raspberry Pi camera, um, uh, which I'd like to get going because apparently it's a good camera and it has you know it's inexpensive for what it is but in any case uh, i'm probably not going to go that way because i found another solution that i like a lot better um and i will uh get into that um in a, in a second but i've always wanted an all sky camera just because i i set a, ca a camera up in my backyard uh full like 2017 and um uh, during the Perseids meter shower and i got a, i got some some shots i thought it was really cool and i you know i froze a frame and i printed it out and i i took it to work and i showed it off and somebody bought me lunch for it so um i'm seeing if i can get a whole steak dinner <laughs> eventually one day um but the uh it i from there i was like okay i gotta do this and there's always been solutions out there uh but ever since uh technology has been improving and changing uh since since then, Raspberry Pis have gotten more powerful, uh, cameras have gotten better. Uh, it's become a more realistic, uh, uh, more, not realistic. Um, it's become some of that, that is actually doable with what we have now to keep it inexpensive. Back then, I, I don't even think I was using Raspberry Pi. I set my laptop outside. I left it outside uh, all night, uh, which is fine, right? Um, and I was using Fire Capture. And the reason why I was using Fire Capture it had a really cool feature in it where it would keep looking but i wouldn't actually start recording until uh there was movement and i was able to take the entire night and get it down to about a 20 minute time lapse and i got some meteors i got satellites i got airplanes so it was really 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 neat and that's what kind of got me going and i started looking at different solutions i was looking at um the mini stick pcs uh, a few other things but you know power became a problem and and uh just setting it all up and it, it was a, it was a nightmare. So now that the Raspberry Pis are becoming more uh, popular, uh, I wouldn't say the costs are coming down because every time they come out with a new one, there's a, you know, there's a price increase, but there's more power with it. So there's a bit of a trade off, but you can get away with the lower cost like Raspberry four uh, versus a five and you can get, a you know, get something moving with that. There's a lot you can do with it. So, um, but I want to talk about a new camera that ZWO has uh, released um, and I have it, have it here. Actually, I actually have a stack um, of uh, cameras we're going to go through and um, talk about it. So anyways, let's see who's there. All right, we got some people watching. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Michael, Randy. Good morning, Randy. Good morning, Tom. Tom, the Astro Canuck. Tom, I think we should get you an Astro, uh, in an all-sky camera. What do you think? Um, I know we talked about it. You talked about it. But let's make it a reality, right? So it's part of my project that I, I want to do is um, I want to build a series of these things and make it an all sky camera network and have them installed in various places uh, around Ontario would be great um, to start with. Uh, so if there was an event, if there was a meteor that went shooting through a big one, you know, like the ones that you see on the news, right? I want to uh, see if we can get it from different, different parts of the sky, different areas and what we can, we can bring it in. So good morning, Rick. How are you? All right. So this is the ASI. 676 MC. Now, this is a really, really interesting camera. Um, it, I won't say it's anything necessarily new in terms of features, but um, ZWO actually is promoting this and, and pushing it as an all sky camera. And I'm like, well, why would they do that? Because all their cameras can be done for all sky. They all come with with a lens, right? As such, right? It's a good lens to start off with. Um, what makes it special? So. This is interesting. This is a, um, we've seen this before, right? But not like this. This is a, a all right, here, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in. What do you notice about that sensor? You see that? It's square. So 
there's an advantage of having a square sensor because now we have a larger sensor. We have more of the sky. Nothing is going to get cut off um, with uh, uh, its field of view. So this is a very large field of view. 7.1 by 7.1 millimeter square sensor. That, that's a fairly good size sensor. Um, you know, there are deep space cameras that had sensors like that uh, really not that long ago uh, for uh, for deep sky imaging. So that's pretty impressive. Now, the other thing too is that there's 12.1 million pixels in there. And what size are they? I, I made notes. Um, two, two micron, two, seven, uh, 12.1, 12, oh, 12 million, 12 million, um, uh, two micron pixels in that. Now this is a colored camera. Um, so it has the uh, bare matrix on it. And you can see, I don't know if it comes across in there, a bit of a reddish tinge to it. So it has a UVIR cut on it, which is good because that makes it even more suitable for an all sky camera. And we can, um, uh, it's not going to be affected by the uh, uh, IR and UV. So we'll get nice tight stars with that. Um, nothing bloated or blown out. Uh, so yeah, so that's the ASI 676MC camera. Um, and we do have it on our website. I'll put links to everything below. Um, uh, have you built an all sky camera? Like, have you 3D printed one? Um, you know, tell us what your experiences were below. Like, what software have you used? Did you run into problems? Um, do you have a, a case that you made? Are you 3D printed or out of plumbing parts? I've seen that a lot. It's pretty, pretty popular. Um, so, anyways, yeah, that's, that's that. Good morning, Tammy. How are you? Um, so that, that's on my list right now that I'm pretty active with, uh, in building. Um, all right, so there's some other cameras I want to show off really quick. And as we get into the summer months, um, there's going to be some uh, planets available to, to watch. Saturn is going to be available in the, in the uh, pre-dawn sky, which is nice. You got to wake up really early or stay up really late or just don't go to bed at all and uh, rock, live that rock star lifestyle. Um, but there's a new camera that's come out from ZWO as well. This is the ASI 585MM. So... Three years ago, three, four years ago, we were introduced to the ASI 585MC, which was the, uh, uh, where Player One had their Uranus-C camera, um, which this kind of exploded. Uh, great camera, very, very sensitive, and uh, you can actually do some good luck imaging, get some amazing results for, with, for DSO with it. So now, see, there's a rectangular sensor. They have released a monochrome version of this. So if you wanted to really up your planetary gain, game and you want to uh, get that really super high resolution that you would get with uh, an LRGB or just an RGB image uh, for planetary. Mono is here. You know, put some filters in front of this, put an automatic filter wheel, just need inch and a quarter filters. You don't need anything um, uh, fancy uh, with it um, because of the size of the sensor, right? We can, we take this black ring off like so, right? And you have an M42 thread and just goes right on to uh, a camera and away you go. Uh, that's a camera, filter wheel, and then you can go from there. Um, so Saturn's gonna be out, great image, uh, great object to be imaging uh, if you are uh, gonna get into planetary imaging because it's it, it's big, it's beautiful, you can get some amazing dynamics out of it. Um, Jupiter is up right now still, but it's, it, it, it's getting low pretty quick into the night as the nights get longer, um, so might not be ideal, but yeah, give it a shot anyways. Um, but yeah, um, the, the 585 MM is here. Now, if you're into solar, eh, eh, I've, I've talked to some people and they said it's a great camera, but um, it's not ideal for solar. If you want to do solar, I got something else for you. Hold on. That hurt. All right. This is, nope, that's not it. This is, now this has been out for about a year or so. Um, this is the ASI 678. Yep. 678MC. Now, this is also available in uh, monochrome, which would be good for solar. Um, uh, but this is uh, uh, the 678. Oh, I should mention as well, the 585MM, that is an 8.2 megapixel camera. So it's, you know, it's a decent camera. Okay. Uh, two, two microns, two microns, 2.9 microns. I got, I got a little cheat note over here. Okay. So the six, seven, eight, this is the, um, update from the one, seven, eight, which was an amazing camera. Still is an amazing camera. Um, but they've, they've kind of put that camera on steroids. So now we have a better sensor. It's not as noisy, 
right? Uh, pixels are a little bit different. This is an eight megapixel camera, right? And sorry, six megapixel camera. I knew something wasn't right. Six megapixel camera, two microns. And uh, what they've done with this is they've put memory on it now. So it has a, a, a 256 gigabytes of uh, buffer uh, for the USB transfer. And th the 178 suffered with that because it didn't have an onboard memory. And the transfer rate on it, especially if you're doing solar or planetary, was, you know, anywhere between 15 and 19 frames per second, which is horrible. Where this is going to get closer between 50 and 70 frames per second, depending how you push it, depending on the length of your USB cable, depending on the quality of your USB port. Uh, don't go through a hub, go directly to a computer. Uh, you'll get a better uh, transfer rate. So this is a 678. So this is a good all-round image uh, imager for planets and also for um, solar I would definitely recommend this camera um, uh, if you want something that'll do a bit of everything. Now, for solar, I would recommend the mono over the color because um, you can apply false color. Typically with a color camera and solar, because it's very red and you can't get the same dynamics that you would out of, uh, um, in details as you would out of uh, a monochrome camera, right? Which is you know, deep space imaging, same thing. All right, the last one, the last one I want to show, this is, it's a different. Um, now, QHY came out with this camera first, and ZWO, we sold a lot of them, actually. Uh, ZWO came out with one uh, shortly after, um, to no one's surprise. This is the ASI 715. It looks exactly the same as all the other ones. Take the camera off, because you can use it for all skies if you wanted to. Right, there it is. Now, this is a much smaller sensor much smaller sensor right so this is ideal for planets because you have a small sensor the the planet will fill up more of the sensor uh within that, that ratio uh so the planet will appear bigger now thinking okay if it's going to be bigger uh it um it might become pixelated not with this this has super 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 tiny pixels 1.4 micron uh so this makes it really ideal as a planetary imager uh, especially if you have uh, a short focal length, right? This will be well matched. Higher focal length, maybe not so much. You might want to look at some of the other cameras for that, um, and we'll get into that for in a second. But uh, this is a really good camera um, to get that really super high resolution and really pick up the details. Um, uh, you can probably try it on a high focal length, but probably be okay. But uh, uh, really interesting with the uh, with the sensor with the small pixels in the small format. Um, so I expect this to do really well. Um, for uh, for planetary imaging. Now, there are this is something I complained about to ZWO. They said, "Do you have any feedback?" I said, "Yeah, you know, streamline your planetary cameras because they have like a million of them, and it makes it difficult to really pick out which is which. And there's a lot of overlap between the cameras. Some cameras are better at some things than others. Um, solar, we talked about the six, seven, eight. Um, I think the undisputed king for solar is probably the seven. Uh, um, Um, oh shoot. I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, we're not talking about solar necessarily. Uh, there is, um, uh, a tool on the internet. We talked about this as well. We showed it the astronomy.tools website. Last time we talked about it was for field of view to determine the field of view for your, uh, camera and scope setup to make sure that your, your object's gonna fit, Let's see, check your framing and so on. Um, they also have a sensor suitability, right? Which you can use for uh, taking your, your scope. You put the sensor in, some other data, and it will tell you if it is a good match or not based on the pixel size, right? Uh, keep in mind, a lot of it has to do with, it. a lot of that is more with uh, deep space imaging. Um, so it doesn't want to, so the, the let me think about this, the result that it gives you is based more for deep space imaging, if a camera is gonna be suitable or not. Now, keep uh, based on sky conditions and so on. With uh, planetary, I think it's gonna be a little bit different um, because the objects are gonna be much brighter than they would be with um, deep space imaging but you still have to be within right. You're not gonna be able to t take, well, you, you could, right? But I wouldn't recommend it. it a, a camera that has super large pixels and use it for planetary on a short focal length and expect something that's gonna be good. It's just gonna be a mismatch. You, then you're gonna see pixelation when you zoom in, right? Versus something that has really small pixels and a high resolution. This is crazy. 
This is 8.4 meg. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of pixels in a small area, right? So it's going to be a nice high resolution to it. Um, so anyways, some options to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. Um, so what else is going on? Uh, still got some more used equipment that's come in. So we have uh, uh, a beautiful Rasa 11 inch that is available. Um, we have a, an eight inch um, RC that has come in. It's on the website uh, and uh, CGXL. All right. Now this is without the tripod. You would need a pier for it. So it's excellent for if you have a pier or uh, in an observatory or something like that. Uh, big heavy duty tripod, 75 pound payload on that one. Um, and it comes with everything, counterweights, keypads, so on. It's virtually new, hasn't been used. I know the owner uh, and he set it up and he's just going a different direction now. Um, and he went smaller versus big, right? So anyways, I thought that was interesting. But we have it here, if, if you're interested, uh, come on by, uh, take a look. We're here till three o'clock today. Uh, or you can always give us a call, drop us an email. I'm gonna put the links to um, some of the stuff that I've been working on with the All Sky camera uh, in the comments below uh, with the Raspberry Pi and um, uh, the, uh, the cameras. So if you have any, uh, if you have any desire to do that, you know, tr check it out, try it out. Give me a call. Let me know what you want to do, uh, with it. Maybe we can help you out. Uh, maybe we can set up that network, uh, eventually. Um, and, uh, I think it'd be, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So anyways, thanks for tuning in everyone. Clear skies. See you next week. Um, the weather is getting better. Um, I think we're approaching new moon right now, aren't we? Yeah. End of the month. We're in that time of year. E you know how you know it, it it's cloudy. Anyways, Chris Geiser, we'll talk to you next week.